does. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay. How's everybody doing? Let's see some action in the chat. I am just uh, sending a message. Forgive me whilst I'm distracted a moment. Hey guys, how you doing? All right, okay. Let me get up the, the Bitcoin. Let's see some messaging. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to flick through the chat. See who's, uh, see who's on here. Hey, Kevin. Kevin, wasn't your Zoom title, Villa on Top? What's, what's, what's happened there, man? Huh? What's happened there? <laughs> okay, Tony Barra, I will, I will show you the Bitcoin. I will, I will. Good morning, good morning. All right. Yeah, did you see how Spursy Spurs were at the weekend, Kevin? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So, the mighty Bitcoin, eh? Three weeks of just... I know. Psh, 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 psh. I know, <laughs> I know. Pretty much a straight shot, which is wonderful. And those that are eagle-eyed will notice that when we have these little sidewards cooling off action, that money's flowing into alts. So Scott would give you a much broader, much more specific, much more factually detailed answer about global liquidity and everything from there. I'm just keeping it at this level of... If you're just trying to figure out what is going on here, well, you can see Bitcoin, it tears off. It takes a little breather to the side and then money tends to flow into the alts. And we've seen lots of breakouts and lots of the coins that were holding on the uh, the portfolio. Things like um, trying to think of something else than woo, because somebody accused <laughs> me of being in love with woo. And I couldn't <laughs> care about woo. Every coin is a scam as far as I'm concerned. And I'm just there to get the money and then dump it. That's it. But if you take something like woo that's been on the 100x uh, sheet, you know, if you'd snagged 11 cents woo and just held it, you know, well, you'd have a 3x. No, not quite a 3x, but it would be doing all right. So if we look at what's happened, then we've we've taken a bit of a breather around the 100,000 mark. And that was to be, I think, expected, not guaranteed, but expected. Why? Because these big round numbers psychologically really mean something. Because believe it or not, there's a whole bunch of people that just trade on emotions. They don't have anything. They just trade on emotions, right? Especially retail. So what's going to happen with this 100,000? Like, <clears throat> if you said to me, are we going to get to 100,000? I would say I'm 99% sure, right? I'm not going to say I'm 100% sure. I've gone down that route before. <laughs> I'd be 99% sure that we're going to hit 100, 100K. But we can start to just theorize what do we think is going to happen? What, what, what's the likely reaction when we, when we do hit 100K? So each time that we've shot up, we've had, you know, a pullback. And then he was immediately, immediately bought, okay? A little bit of selling immediately bore. Like the direction of the trend is still up. It doesn't matter that this little bit of near side price action is moving to the right. You know, we are going up here. And we're seeing the same thing now, this little sidewards. But we're just below 100K. So when we blast through 100K, do we keep on going? Do we blast through 100K and come back? and need to and need to retest it we've had three weeks of just straight up action if you go back and look at the the bitcoin chart through all these various cycles then you'll you, you can get some idea right over the cycles that you generally get one two three weeks great week four week five week six you've got to start being cautiously optimistic because there's going to be a pullback but with the price of Bitcoin shooting up, 
this is when retail see the price of Bitcoin going up, 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 up. And they just don't believe or don't understand or don't want to do that the price of Bitcoin will come down. OK, we will have a retrace. And it's generally during those retraces that altcoins can really start to uh, pick up some traction. And you have seen that money flow through Ethereum starting to pick up um, some pace now. There's a little bit of action with Ethereum and it's looking, you know, things are looking pretty good. So to wrap my wrap my little section up then, <laughs> I'm 99% sure that we're going to crack up. <laughs> 99%. That's a big call. Right? 99% sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to what's up. Dude, I'm not 99% sure that I'm going to take a shit in the morning tomorrow, dude. I think you want to adjust that number down a little bit. <laughs> uh, that's cool, man. Okay. That's cool. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I realize that you've just walked into this cold stop. We've been talking and walking through. So just to try and summarize then. We've had three weeks of upside. <clears throat> the pullbacks have been very short. Bitcoin has been, you know, there's been buyers there to snap it up each time. Each time we have had a little sideways price action. We've seen a nice little bump from Ethereum. 100K is a round psychological number. I feel that we are going to surpass 100K, but it's a, what's the interaction with the 100K? And then this is where he just gets totally into theory. Do we continue? Do we continue with this small range underneath it, then break through, retest? Do we break through and go? There's lots of scenarios that could happen, but basically we're in price discovery. And I ain't trying. I, I wouldn't want to get into the business of predicting right now. Mm. Like I, I got it wrong last week. I thought, fuck, it's all overblown a bit. Like we're due for a bit of a pullback, and we just went sideways for four days and blasted. Like, mm -hmm. and if I look at what's happening today, fucking Dino coins breaking out. Yeah, fucking that was Ada, just yeah. Sand, yep. Mana, yep. Um, XRP, XLM, the top performers. Like, mm -hmm. okay, so let's be real here for a minute. Out of the three of us, who picked Sand as being the top performing <laughs> coin for the bull market cycle? <laughs> who picked Stellar Lumens? As being number two, mm. who picked fucking XRP and ADA? Come on, guys. Like, like our, our track record on predictions here ain't so fucking great. Like, like, let's have a little bit of humility. Like, weird shit's going on. Mm. The normies are coming. You know the normies are coming because that's the shit they buy. They buy the shit they heard of last time. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't think any other coin has ever. On XRP. Yeah. My, my, my friend, he, he did all the research. Fucking XRP banks are going to use it. It's going to replace the, you know, like all that shit. ADA, fucking, you still got those ADA NFTs, bro? Me? No, no, no. I got ADA, <laughs> Ethereum <laughs> NFTs and Solana <laughs> NFTs for that, but uh, <laughs> I got out alive in profit. Really? Yeah. Wow. We had uh Ian and I had a mate who was a, a world class Muay Thai fighter, actually. He had mm -hmm. he was he was almost good enough to be he fought all of the top ten Muay Thai guys from from, from my era professionally, and he was a lovely guy and he was my jiu-jitsu training partner and he was balls deep in Ada NFTs. That was his life. And uh yeah blue chip oh. nfts blue chip nfts it's like there's there's no <laughs> such thing you just try and buy it and then sell it to some absolute idiot as quickly as you can and that's it mm -hmm. but they still haven't really i haven't paid much attention to nfts and like actually to see where if there's any money flowing into them uh at the multi-level marketing scheme for names. at the moment and uh the only NFTs worth paying attention to are retardio cousins mm -hmm. Your cousins. i kid you not mm. retardio. i agree yep i agree i haven't paid much attention to that but i've seen some 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 like 
betas and retardio stuff that are launching and they're doing really well. Dog, let's go. Fucking come here, dog. Get your ass up. Come on. Up. Come on. Chase people what a good dog you are. Sit. <laughs> good girl. Down. Sleep. Sleep. Gotta make it come to me. Sleep. Good girl. Fucking look at that. That's how <laughs> fucking dog works. <laughs> Baby. A baby, look at him sleeping there like a good dog. <laughs> You're ready. That's your that's that's your new meme coin, mate. Like that, yeah. There you go. Launch it, launch it, <laughs> dude. I just uh, I just sold out of Cat Jack. Um, I've been doing a bunch of really retarded meme coin stuff. That's like too retarded to even share with the group. It's like, I'd be embarrassed to share it with the group, but uh, that's, that's not a bad little sell right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cat Had to do it to him. Had to do it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for interrupting guys. It's good to see you all. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> all right so do you want me to go through i don't have much but I'm, I'm i'm very i'm very like i do agree with you scott in terms of all the stuff that i'm pumped like especially the weekend right the weekend was actually very very interesting all the stuff that pumped it was pretty much diner stuff like let me let me just show you so i'm a little bit i'm a little out. bit I'm a little bit like on the sidelines in a way. I, I was in the sidelines and then on, on Saturday, Sunday, when I saw sort of, I wasn't aware. Well, unless, wasn't unless you're in FINRAP, FINRAP is balls deep in all of that shit, all of that Definitely. terrible fucking bullshit. Definitely. Uh, but in terms of adding like uh, leverage positions and things like that, I'm a little bit uh, cautious. Um, so let me just share my screen and we'll go through uh, things that I'm seeing though, because um, so Ian, you're right. So in terms of like what what's gonna happen at a hundred k, who, no one fucking knows, right? Like that's kind of is that gonna be the retracement point? Is that going to be a new support, right? And then it's gonna blast towards the hundred what the hundred ten. There's that a bunch of studies around that 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 if we break a hundred, we're going to go to a hundred five, even a hundred twenty five, and then a hundred k will become your new support. Is that gonna be sustainable? Who knows? I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no one knows. So this is a very interesting way. Uh, this is a very interesting where, where where Bitcoin is trading at the moment. The only difference, though, that I see from all the uh, bull runs is that now we have institutional money in the game, right? Like, we have the ETFs, and that actually changes a little bit of the dynamics. And things that happen historically might not happen or might just go ballistic. Who knows, right? So that's where I'm at. So that's where I'm at in terms of Bitcoin, right? So I'm holding, I'm holding to make sure, well, not make sure, like just to have a little bit more of a of a of a read of what I look. I think that it could be good opportunity, like short term wise, in terms of actually small little pumps that it could happen, like things, you know, stuff that actually happened over the weekend, like sand. Let's have a look at sand because I was I was watching that. Um, I was watching huge, that. that. That huge big handle today is is like that's usually a top, right? Exactly, exactly. And if you if you go to let's go to Velo Data, right? And this is the sector performance, right? And um, let me just make this bigger. So, and if you this is the the week's best sector performance, and the biggest winners are AXS, Running, Gala, and Sand. The only one that I kind of like about it is running because it does have something new in the market that is actually put in they, they're actually creating a brand new uh chain besides that Dude, all, all, all of those stuff games, is... and, and they're games that suck and they're games that nobody in the real world uses so axs right axs was the like, biggest like, thing yeah like a... so so if no if nobody's using the games and it's not organic buyers and it's not like this is the hot thing on Twitter and people are buying it because they're excited about the gaming sector mm -hmm. and it's going up fast, then what should your default hypothesis be 
your default hypothesis should be that it's been a short against Bitcoin since we exited in 2021. Mm-hmm. And people are covering their shorts. This this a, a rally so fast looks a lot more like a short covering rally than it does than it does like oh wow we're all going to get rich off fucking the metaverse. Like, have you ever heard one person say in the last year, "Fuck, I'm so excited about the metaverse. It's finally come good." Like fucking Zuckerberg cancelled his metaverse project. Like mm. fucking Apple isn't selling the Vision Pro headset. Metaverse is dead as a concept, as a fucking style, as an investment class. Like if you want to be down with the Metaverse, then fuck you too. Like like it's just dead. So your, your default interpretation of that whole thing should be, well, I, I mean... Let me share over the top of you for a second. I'll show you. Sure. Um, so if you were if you were picking I always leave I always leave the sand BTC exit that we did last cycle up on my chart because I think it'll stand for a thousand years and uh, if you look this green line here is when we exited our trade last time this was the best trade I've ever done by the way and if you had have just shorted sand against Bitcoin, that's been a hell of a trade, right? Hmm. Like again, like like short sand, long bit, uh, short sand, um, short sand, long Bitcoin. That's been a what thirteen? It, it's been like a hundred bagger. And does this look more or less like? well, we've had a good run, let's get out of that trade, or does it look like it really, to me, looks like some fundamental analysis of, well, there was 100 people at this time when we exited Sand, there was 117 unique users playing playing Mana at, at the, on that day. And it's like, well, if if you can't get 117 people playing a game in a in a in a single day, that whole sector is fucked. That was a great trade. This to me, I think you have to assume this is just people getting out of this trade. This is not. Mm. This is not. Um, and it may, and it's a perfectly logical place to get out of the trade, right? Like we shorted bit, we shorted Bitcoin at. Um, we went long Bitcoin at sixty nine thousand. We went short. We went short sand at fucking whatever the fuck it was, some huge number, fifteen dollars or something. And now we've had a good run. We've made money on both leagues. It's time to get the fuck out. Mm. Like that's. I, I'm. I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's signs of. Like oh wow, this sector is hot again. I, I mean, know. What, what, I know. What, what, good game. Like, what's the good game in the metaverse? I don't even know, man. To be honest, I haven't researched in meta math and meta. The, the, the biggest thing in, uh, before was the AXS. A, AXS. That was in the in the last uh, cycle. AXS was the big thing, and and it was teams, yep. and it was a lot of the stuff actually happening on that one. That's the only thing I know. I, I haven't done much research on that, to be honest. Um. So so. It was so bad. It also banged exactly the same way yesterday. Exactly. Too. So, so I mean, and it was something. I mean, so so th things that I'm sort of aware of is obviously during the weekend, low liquidity is there. So it's very simple to actually agree. do this kind of pumps and dumps. You know what I mean? So so I'm I'm I'm, I'm I was kind of like holy shit, what's actually pumping? And and I saw all the stuff this morning and saying, mm, I don't know, I don't know. I, I I'm I'm sort of bias at the moment i'm cautious you know what i mean like so that's where i'm at at the moment so i'm not sort of obviously they we we definitely gonna have a, a bullish term in terms of alts but then i'm just looking for really good positions to actually get leverage on it um so i'm just really on the sidelines with leverage at the moment like really uh i wouldn't actually go with this kind of pumps to be honest 
can I be wrong? Definitely. Can sand go to the moon again and all time highs as you know, but um, you know, it's one of those things that at the moment it feels like all this dino stuff, all these old projects are actually finally giving the, the last pump. And maybe this is the dump place in a way, right? People to actually get excited. Uh, you know, you go in, ah, oh, let's go on sand, and it's coming back, it's going to all time highs. Why? Because it, it does have a reference point. Think about it from the perspective of new projects. This is what I'm seeing, and 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 this is kind of my 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 analysis. If you look at sand, right? Let, let's let's let me just that's why I'm so on the sideline for the moment. But like okay, if let's have a look at sand. So I just opened this up in the week in a weekly chart, right? So if you open this in a weekly chart, Elephant. um this pump actually happened just yesterday. Like yesterday happened like you know, huge, huge pump. Now you can you could from the technical perspective, you can see that this is an attractive buy. Why? Because the price of sand was before at seven dollars, right? And now it's at seven cents. You can argue that this could be an easy 10x. Yes or no? Like I just asking like in, in the chat, give me give me your thoughts. Yeah. I mean purely right? on technical analysis yeah yeah you could but stand fast the foundation I, 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 I'm, I'm pulling up funding right data i think that's the i think funding right liquidations is something that's going to be going to be kind of interesting here um it could so, have been a position in the sand discord you know some kind of um it's any, one of those things that Exactly. And all these projects, they are doing exactly the same thing, man. Like, 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 look at AXS. Um, sort of, you know, like sort of breaking a structure. So can this be bottoms? I think like if we get a, a, a bull run, I think this might pump a little bit over here. Uh, can these ones get back all the way up to freaking all-time highs, maybe, who knows, but it's highly unlikely, I see, from that perspective, that's what I'm at. Now, if you compare this a with a new project, exactly, a lot of people that actually hold in and, and think about it, people that actually probably bought around here and, you know, missing the whole bull run, and then if you, you might have a lot of selling pressure. Now, the difference with this two new projects let's have a look at ah by the way wtmx is doing fantastically well so let's talk about that one let's see uh to uh mtx mtx mt wmt <laughs> uh shit. yeah war mobile uh let's talk about this one because this one uh we enter like obviously prior and this one is actually doing good so now all these new oh. projects are going into price discovery Right. And who do you rather be in? Would you rather be into new technologies, new projects, new things that are actually pumping and it could actually, who knows what ceiling it could have? The only side, the only difference on, on high ceilings is you don't know where, thing, where this thing is going to get because there's price discovery. Same thing with Bitcoin. Or would you rather buy sand and say, no, that for sure is going to be there? So that's where I'm at in terms of at the different, like the psychology between new projects against old stuff, right? And if we go back to, to where is it? Like if I, L2s. So L2s, um, same thing, a lot of like old stuff, like DeFi is still good stuff happening. So I'm, 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 I'm just sort of seeing which ones are the projects that are actually holding long-term. So for instance, if you look at DeFi, you have Uni, Jupe, Aave, and Maker. So Maker finally is coming, is coming back, but then at the end of the day, you need you pay, but they are actually good projects that have been sort of performing well, right? Um, AI is still good in AI. So I think this will be the good time to load in AI if you haven't, because I think AI is going to keep bumping. So if we do have a dump, I think that will be my play to add more AI. And I'm, I'll show you the list throughout the day. Uh, L1s is still the best bet. Like obviously they sort of, uh, APT, BNB, Solana, AVAX, SUI, ETH, 
we are on all of them, right? We are in APT, BNB, Solana, and I think this one will be, keep performing, right? So mean had a little bit, had had a little bit of a retracement. So should I add more in memes? Should I buy this? I don't think I'll buy any of this stuff, but I think I'll 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 I'll, I'll definitely load up on AI if uh, we do have a pullback. So that's kind of my my plan of attack for this week. Instead, if we do have it. Now the big the, the challenge here is, is are we gonna have it or not? That's that's where I'm at, right? So 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 yeah. Um I think we should probably take a bit of a look at sand as a potential short. All these things as a potential short. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Uh let's have a look at uh Bello. Yeah, OXT. OXT was crazy on Sunday. Like I saw a bunch of this stuff coming up and said, I'm missing out. I'm missing out on on everything. So I had that feeling. You know what I mean? Like I had that feeling and say, no, stay away from it. Like it's uh, it, it looks it looks this is the, this is this is a really good sign of, of of you becoming a really, really great trader is that you're recognizing in real time that you, you recognize in real time. That oh shit, I'm feel I'm just feeling massive flame oil and, and I'm probably wrong. Mm. Mm -hmm. And think about it from the perspective, all right, if you miss it, right? Let's say that we're wrong. Okay. If you're wrong, you can always grab pullbacks whenever you have better conviction on, right? For some reason this is not working. That's kind of my approach. Obviously, you can miss a bunch of the whole like initial run, but you know, at the end of the day, um, if you're wrong, that is a sand, by the way, Scott. Uh, if you're wrong, then you can always get back in on any pullbacks. You know what I mean? So, so, so let's have a look at sand. So this is a thirty minutes uh, chart. Yeah, a bunch of liquidations to the upside. It's just liquidations both sides all over the place, man. Like I'm not, I'm not seeing any divergence mm. between spot and futures. Um, can you load the premium up, premium up there? If premium's going nuts, aggregated premium, that fourth one down. Yep, good one. If premium's going nuts, it's probably a short. So that probably doesn't look like a short yet. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. I, I, um, so that's a short. That this is a short squeeze. This is not a dump. This is not an artificial pump to to generate yeah. exit liquidity. So it's probably not a fall off the plate, let's short it situation. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't real, I mean, we have a we have a divergence between open interest, open interest, people cashed out open interest on the on the last one, but a lot of that is a lot of that is the liquidation, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's an edge exactly. either way. I think I think yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm not, I don't have a bias. I I'm just obviously it looks, technically speaking, it looks very good, right? But it's weird, man. I feel, I don't know. Um, it's just the, the fact that all the stuff pump at the same time, all the old stuff happen, pump at the same time. You feel, you know, it's weird and happen on a Sunday. Well, Sunday for me. Um, sorry for you guys. You know, it's, yeah. That's where I'm at. So obviously, I'll be doing more, my, a little bit more research in terms of if if we can actually get some 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 uh, on chain on chain data on sand and all this all the stuff to see what's really happening on chain. And and you know, I think that will clarify a lot of this stuff. But um, but yeah, still big on AI. So obviously, in my list of AI agents, that's the one that I want to load up. To be honest, uh, uh, so that's where I'm. That's my plan. That's my plan for this week. 
if we do get a fullback. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of sidelined ex except for my mean bags and my spot bags, which are doing okay. I'm kind of sidelined waiting for pullback myself. Mm. And this is this is the thing that doesn't necessarily mean that we need to have a pullback. You know what I mean? Like let's let's yeah, let's, we don't let's have go. rip and it can just rip and run. Max Payne is Max Payne is is an alt season when everyone's rotated to Bitcoin, right? Correct. Let's have a look at Sol. Um, because here's what I'm looking very closely, and and I think I I I did tell you guys this. So I'm looking at Solana Bitcoin, uh, the Solana Bitcoin chart, very closely. So this is where I'm at. At the this is Solana against Bitcoin. Now we are in this triangle, right? Right now. So my thesis is, so my if we break around here that's when we might enter a full run sort of continuation but as you can see we can touch this triangle back again and do small stuff until we break either way it doesn't necessarily need to break above it could actually break below right yeah. so guys who are seeing this for the first time a, a triangle isn't some sort of magic i drew these lines on the chart and they're predictive a triangle is representative of decreasing volatility in a trading range so if you think about what a triangle is, it's the market doesn't know which way it wants to jump. It could go up or it could go down. And every time it looks like it wants to go up or it looks like it wants to go down, people get faked out into buying it. So there's less and less buyers and less and less sellers. And so it moves mm -hmm. less and less and less and less and less and gets quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter. And you can think of this like a World War I trench warfare of attrition eventually one side or the other runs out of ammo. And that could be the buyers just use up all their ammo trying to push Bitcoin above 100K and there's no one else to buy it at 101K. That is entirely possible. It yep. could be that the sellers who are selling at 100K thinking, selling at 99K thinking they're so fucking smart, could be that they just get run out of, run out of juice and that and sailor comes in with another five billion dollar bid and just like cranks it straight away to 115 because there's no more sellers because they're all exhausted like mm -hmm. we can't and we shouldn't have an opinion on that mm -hmm. like if we if we were to have an opinion on that if we had reason to have an opinion on that that would already start to be reflected in the price Right, like, like we would mm -hmm. start to see signs that. Are you seeing signs that the sellers are exhausted? Because I'm not. Are, are you seeing no, signs not. that the buyers are? No, I'm not. I'm I'm, 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 I'm in the middle. Technically, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm sort of the, waiting I'm, to see what happened. Yeah, I'm exactly with you. What about you, Ian? Like, mm. like where in where are you? Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of business done probably a year and a half ago so i'm really getting paid off on the uh the early entries that i took um but this was something we said at the start of the call you know Wu has been on the 100x coin club since almost its inception um but other than that i'm set up in the finrev dgen accounts just waiting for that bigger pump and i'm just on the sideline now like i've i've made my bets the rough trade finrev is cranking I, I i i fucked up and let an api key expire and i missed out like a tremendous amount of finref gains it's so, so, so terrible <laughs> for mm -hmm. me. Um, but i mean like, yeah, it's so lots... terrible with that i mean how, how is your finref dj account going the last week it should be like fucking monstrous it's not quite monstrous yet it's more like tickling the ball you know, <laughs> things are going Pickling up. The balls. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Moving up, and it's like we're positioned, we're in profit, <clears throat> but we need uh, something like um, salt. One thing I'm seeing that's concerning me a little bit is that Bybit is, is outperforming Binance, which is something that we've never seen before. Bybit at, on FinRev is, is outperforming everything by, by a fair margin. Which yeah, I and before. I think I think I know why because obviously Bybit has, um, because I'm tracking new launches and something that I might 
show you guys next week in terms of all new stuff that has actually been listed on these exchanges. And Bybit has done a tremendous amount of listings like in the past month, couple of months, man, it's, it's crazy the amount of listings that these guys have been doing. Um, so that's probably why you have more tokens to trade. So you have better, uh, that, that could be one option. That could be one. It, it's also, it's almost the premier exchange right now, right? Exactly. There is a lot of people, like if you think about it from the perspective of people doing bots and things like that, and 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 Bybit obviously is the best option that they have to actually connect. It's, it's highly liquid and highly reliable from that perspective. Uh, KuCoin is going down in a way that obviously they're closing down into different countries and things like that. Um, Binance is fairly restricted uh, among different countries and things. So 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 Bybit is still the choice. Like for instance, in Australia, the best option will be Bybit, right? Uh, in 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 Europe that will be as well. So the amount of uh, liquidity that I'm getting is, is actually outperforming on Binance, definitely. It's getting a lot of, a lot of, oh. a lot of oh. volume. All right. There's, there, yeah, I think for, for, for me, Bybit is the consensus best place to trade right now. And that was not true six mm -hmm. months ago. Uh, okay. So we got some, uh, we got some questions. Perry, what are the ETF institutions doing? Are they buying at 90K? Well, let's go to the videotape and let's check that out for sure. This is the best place to get the Bitcoin flow. And let's look, you get it. So we're getting... A billion dollars, four hundred and ninety million, seven hundred and seventy-three, eight twenty-nine. This is why it's been going up. Consistent institutional mm -hmm. flow, and the cumulative flow is this is this light green line. You can see when did we start to pump? You know, around here, start of October. When did when did the market start to move? start of October, right? Like mm. this in this some accident, right? Um okay, other questions in the chat. Um check soul liquidation. That's a good idea. Morning Charat. So at the crop Sabadi Mangan. Sabadi. Okay, liquidations. Nothing really significant, but what we're seeing is price price reaching an all-time high and people naturally banking profits at that all-time high. You know, the you can see as as it went up to all time high, a normal thing that happens is that people sell when they reach all time highs. Bec why? Because they've been bag holders since twenty twenty one, and I finally got my money back. I can sell out. Um, in fact, I got a message from someone about sand. I finally got my money back on sand. Should I sell today? Like you, you that that's a thing that people think about. Um, okay, yeah. we cover the um, Marlon. If so. Is there any liquidations? No, there's no liquidations. Oops. Um, no, there's no liquidations. Um, let's look at it on a bit of a short-term time frame. Like, no, this just looks like normal stuff. Like, let's look at it on a daily chart. I mean, you know, mm. it's off. It, 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 you can see here was the here was our peak of open interest just before the all time highs. As it spiked to all time highs, people took a bit off the table. That's a perfectly natural and normal and logical thing to want to do. Um, to 
There's potential of double top. Um, next question, Marlon, if Trump gets the BTC strategic reserve going, well, for a start, hmm. you know, Trump is a politician. Like, I know uh, I know he's promised to pump our bags, but you can't really trust anything that anyone in politics says. So I'll believe it when I fucking see it. He's committed to buy 800,000 Bitcoin. No, he has not. He said a bunch of bullshit. Um you know, he could not buy 800,000 Bitcoin. Like no one, if, if, if anyone buys 800,000 Bitcoin, um, Sailor has bought what? 20,000, something like that? Yeah. So Sailor bought 20,000 Bitcoin and pumped it a significant percentage of the way up. Like no one can buy 800,000 Bitcoin and and... If they do, they, then Bitcoin's going to be at multi-million dollar prices. So um, would Trump have a mandate to, to to make us all rich? I fucking hope so. But how much am I willing to bet on Donald Trump telling the truth about this one thing that's going to like totally change all of our lives and make us all richer than astronauts? No. No. No, no, no. Tony, your Finner of DGEN account's up 15% last five days. Hell yeah. I fucked mine up and let an API key expire about <laughs> we got it. Oh, man, that sucks. I'm crying today. I'm crying. That sucks. I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying. Crying. The farside.co.ut. Uh, okay. What about Sol ETF, F, Sol ETH chart? That is very definitely working. Oh, yeah, I was looking at that one as well. This is a very interesting chart. You can see that one-way traffic, right? Solana is mm -hmm. a better coin than Ethereum. Um, Solana's got all the attention. It's got all the thing. But the Ethereum thesis isn't that Ethereum is good. The Ethereum thesis is... Shorting Ethereum and going long Bitcoin has been a trade of a lifetime. Mm. It's going to squeeze just like the dino coins. So it's exactly like the dino coins, except we've seen no real sign of a squeeze yet. And in fact, we saw that this was not a squeeze. So where does it have to get to to get to start a squeeze? Well, here won't do it. So we're a long way from seeing like ETH movement. If you think we're going to get an ETH squeeze, the way to play ETH, Pepe, it's at all-time highs. It's the only ETH meme of any consequence. It's the strongest ETH meme. It's got momentum on its side. Like if you if you if you're an ETH believer, fuck ETH, go Pepe. Mm. Is my opinion. If Sol outperforms ETH, should we still enter Pepe? Let's answer that question with the data. Let's go back to look the start of October. Let's look at Pepe. What is it? The one, two, three, four, fifth strongest coin? Pretty fucking good. I don't know. Oh, and Mog is the other Mog is the other eat me. Thank you for reminding me. Mm-hmm. Not bad either. Not terrible. You're perfectly fucking happy holding that in the portfolio. Mm. Perfectly happy. You know? I mean, what are we trying to do here, guys? We're, we're, we're just riding the hot shit. Very much. He Jenny Cow's got big swings, guys. Mm. <laughs> if you That's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. They swing like they swing like altcoins, dude. If you run on a if, if you run Bitcoin is a Bitcoin is a hundred vol asset. So if you run 
your Finra account at 90 or 100 vol, you can expect it to move similarly to Bitcoin. You can expect it to go fucking nuts and shit the bed and go nuts and shit the bed and go nuts and shit the bed. That's what you can expect. Um, because sadly, we get nothing for nothing, which is the uh, um, sad fact of life. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, that's but that's basically the fact it is. Um, how do we take the institution's money? Um, you don't want to take the institution's money. You want to take retail's money. Mm. You know? You want the normies coming back. You, you, you sort of want to go with the institutions. If you like, that's that could be my take, right? Like, obviously, you know, that if you go with that flow, it's a hard, it, like, it's an easier, you know, it's an easier way to actually make money, right? Very by and large, the institutions all make money. And we know this because they got big fucking giant buildings that they own and lobbies and they pay tens of thousands of people. Tens of thousands of people get paid half a million to five million dollars a year to work for them. And the only reason they could do that is if they were fucking good. So if you were going to sit down at a poker table and you, and there was a poker table full of fucking idiots and there was a poker table full of guys that looked like billionaires with fucking Patek Philippe watches and like, you, you know, you don't want to sit at that table. You don't want to sit at the World Series of Poker table. You want to sit at a table where there's fucking idiots. And, uh, yeah, you don't... Get, wash your brain out with soap about this idea of I'm going to take the money off the institutions. No, you're not, dude. No, you're not. Neither am I, neither are you. They're going to take our money. The best we can do is, is say, okay, the institutions are going to pump this market. Let's ride along. Mm -hmm. Let's try and get out when they're getting out. Because they're smarter than us. They really mm. actually are smarter than us. Like, since I said, like, like Maurizio, how much smarter is James than, than right. us? Night and right. day. Night and day. Definitely. And not only is smarter, they do have the capital to move the markets. Think about it from the perspective, right? Like in an institution, sales. Imagine uh, BlackRock. I think BlackRock right now holds a bunch of Bitcoin. If they start to sell Bitcoin, what do you guys think what's going to happen to Bitcoin? There's no amount of technical analysis that overrides the fact that someone with, someone selling a shitload of Bitcoin mm -hmm. is going to drive the price down. It's like there's just... Uh, well, uh, I, I mean, HFT, HFT is a net positive for markets. HFT is a net positive for retail investors. Why? Because... You know, when I started investing, you used to have to pay half a percent in transaction costs and the spreads were wide. And now the transaction costs are negligible and and the spreads are tight. So on balance, mm. you know, HF, HFT participants are not particularly profitable. HFT is best thought of as a small pool of money that people that smart people get paid for making the markets very efficient. And they have a they have like a hundred way knife fight over that limited pool of money. HFT firms in total make about $5 billion a year. And in return for that $5 billion a year, they perform the useful function of making sure that when you set hit sell on, on your Binance account, you don't get completely fucked. That's pretty worth, worthwhile. We don't have that in the meme coin market. So when I hit sell, I nuke the chart. Like who wants that with fucking Bitcoin? No one wants that. Mm. The institutions have the smart... Dude, Perry, if there's one thing that humanity really cares about, it's pricing the S&P 500. So if you think about what that looks like, the starting salary for a, uh, an Optiva or a James... The starting salary for an Optiva graduate in Sydney, which is a second-tier location is 424,000 US a year plus bonus expected total comp for a graduate of 650 grand a year. And for that, they expect you to know absolutely nothing and contribute absolutely nothing to profitability for about two years. They spend about a million bucks training you. They sit you next to someone who 
has a track record of making millions and millions of dollars a year. They pay you literally millions of dollars a year if you do what they're training you to do correctly. And they start with the people who are the smartest people in the world. They start with guys who are winning math comps when they were age 12. And Maurizio and Ian and I weren't doing that at age 12. We're just, and you know why? Because we're not smart enough. So you're taking the smartest people in the world, you're paying them millions of dollars a year, and then you're paying them up to five to $10 million a year US in bonuses if they can do that thing. And you want to get in a battle of wits with those guys? Like, fuck off. Like, just don't do it. Like, there's a guy around the corner with the with a, with a fucking collection of eight or NFTs, and you can trade against him. Like you're just gonna do much better if you find a if you find a better game. Like that's why we're in crypto. We're not in crypto. I'm not in crypto because I believe in the tech. I've got no opinion about the tech. I'm in crypto because it's full of idiots, and I can't compete in the other way. You know, I, I I'm a very good trader, and I traded for ten years in the other markets. You know what my compound annual return was? Fifteen percent. That's it. 10 years, 60 to 80 hour weeks, tried my ass off, tried my tried my very best, and I got 15% a year. The Spoos did 27% this year. Like, you know, I underperformed just buying an index fund over the long term, despite trying my best. Why? Because the people over there, they're much fucking better than me. Mm. And I don't want any of you to make that mistake of thinking that you can go and it's just like stepping, it's just like stepping into the ring with Prime Mike Tyson. Like, like it's just not gonna end well for you. Right? The execution. Yeah. <laughs> just, just don't do it. Like you can't pick stocks. You're not gonna pick stocks, right? Like, don't fucking kid yourselves. Here, at least we've got a shot. Like, we've got a good shot. We are still ridiculously early in the world of crypto, and that's that's part of oh, yeah. oh, yeah. just being here. That's Definitely. one thing I really believe. Yeah, you know? I agree. This yep. shit is going to eat TradFi whole. It's going to swallow it whole eventually, I believe. Mm. Yep. And when I it... agree, I think. Go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, when it comes, we're positioned beautifully. Yeah, I think definitely. I think we are. We're starting seeing a, 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 a little bit of, of all the spot bags actually pumping, and which is good. And I think that will continue like that. And and now I think we, we might we're going to do a lot of more leverage trading, like short, like medium term things here and there. And and this is the time to do it. Like from here, all next year is going to be it's going to be great. So I want to I want to go yeah. hard on leverage trading the first dump we get. The first, big, yep. the first big scary dump we get. I think it's too dangerous to jump into leverage here. The first yep. scary dump we get. What are you buying? Like, like what? What's um, on your list? All right, what's on my list? Let me go through it because uh, same list as you guys know my list already. I've been sharing it every single. Oh uh, uh, yeah. No, it's not here. Yeah. All right. So big on. Obviously, in terms of memes, what I want to load up, like we already load up on with Pepe, but I want to load up on Goat. Um, you like so Goat? So yeah, Goat, Goat could. Uh, it's an interesting. It's an interesting um, narrative. So I'm just going. It's that. everywhere. So it, so it's got it, it's got liquidity. Yeah, it does have a lot of liquidity, and it does look like it will continue on. So I'm just. I like this is a very tentative price to lo start loading up in, in spot, but I do want to do some leverage stuff. So all these memes, I would rather not do any any uh, leverage. By the way, so I wouldn't um, I wouldn't do leverage on I wouldn't do leverage on memes. It's like leverage on because le memes behave like leverage trades. So exactly right. So so technically all the stuff, but I do really like uh, gold uh, bonk as well. Um, definitely like bonk. 
Um, definitely like Mumu. Mumu, no, 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 never mind. Fartcoin, obviously. Bonkered all time highs is impressive. I, I yeah. really like Fartcoin. I yeah, think fart, Fartcoin. I think Fartcoin is one that no socials, no influences. Um, it's like the joke is the name. Like, like that's yep. pretty funny. I made a million dollars off Fartcoin. Like, that's hilarious. Yep. Like, that's a fucking story. Guys, <laughs> forget your fucking Bitcoin. I'm in Fartcoin. Like, yeah. like that's actually, <laughs> like, you, 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 you can actually see that taking off. Like, the joke. Like, and, and I don't know about you, but fart jokes are fucking funny as hell around our house. I, my, yeah. my daughter play the fart game all the time. Uh, Stephen asking a very good question. How far can fart coin go? Who the fuck knows, to be honest? Like, this could go all the way up to whatever. It could, it's, it's, it could be a multi-billion dollar coin. Technically. Oh, it can crash tomorrow. That's the thing about this crypto stuff, right? So, obviously, that you don't know when the things are going to go. Same thing as Bitcoin. Price discovery, guys. It's, 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 it's a very interesting game, right? So, so, so... That's why I really like so it. So, a bit about price. But tell them a little bit. Let's dig into the, the the psychology of price discovery here, because I think this is important. So, if you look at a coin like Sand, which is worth ten percent of what it was in twenty twenty one, what has what's it worth? Well, is it worth fuck? It's really close to all time highs. So oh, no, so no, no, this is, but this is, uh, this is on Binance. Let me load up KuCoin to get that full story because that's that's something as well that normies do, by the way, guys. And, and you have to be very careful with. And I and I and I, and I did talk about this about uh, leverage. It's still pretty you know, close. Leverage. Oh no, no, that's just yeah, that's no, that's that's just, yeah. Um, so there you go. So now you can actually see that now we have the full picture, okay? So this is on KuCoin, which this thing was listed on technically April, 2021, right? What happens with some exchanges is that you, for instance, load at Bybit or load at uh, a different exchange and you will see that it's almost an all-time highs, but it's not an all-time highs because it's an old, old coin that has been here for ages, you know what I mean. It's been it's been a race. So this is not a price discovery call. This is a, uh, so every, everyone knows that this thing. If you bought it for seven bucks, it's just you hate the thing. Like there's no way that you've held it for five years. You paid seven bucks. It's at seventy cents now, and you still don't think fuck you, coin. You fucked me. That's and mm. and and you know we're all human. You know, compare that with. I bought fart coin for five cents. It's 40 cents. People are talking about it like it's the next big thing. It could be a billion dollar coin. Like, like which of those two narratives is more exciting to you inherently? Oh, mm -hmm. fuck, if it goes up another 900%, I might get my money back, maybe if I'm really lucky. Or, fuck, you know, we have to be lucky, but fuck, this thing could, like, change our lives. Mm. Like which of those two, the, one of those two narratives is inherently exciting. And why is it exciting? Because we hold a lottery ticket in our pocket at all time highs. And that's why, mm -hmm. that's why in meme coins at all time highs, you see this tremendous excitement about them. As soon as, mm -hmm. as soon as the luster comes off a little bit, you start to see fear, which is the other side of greed, the, the, the greed side is, fuck, this could make me rich. Like my mudang or my peanut could be the next fucking whatever, the next go. But then it's also can, I, a little bit. You, can you start see, to think, but maybe I'd, I'll round trip all those gains and maybe that sucks. You uh, can see that exactly with Retario. All right. So Retario yeah, is, exactly. the, is the exact oh, sort yeah. of. This is the, the, the Retario chart. So obviously, and here, Right, everything is start going ballistic. You know, at some point, people are going to take profit. That's the point. That's the game, right? Is the profit is going to keep going, or is it going to die, or new buyers are going to step in? 
So you can clearly see how well supported this thing. And then all of a sudden, bang, and then you get the same dynamic, right? And then you start getting the same dynamic, but then you start getting, this is the most beautiful chart in terms of the dynamics of the market. Why? Because, exactly so. because technically people, you know, you started here, people that bought here might sell a little bit here, new buyers come in here. Then you have bigger bigger liquidity. You can actually see the bigger liquidity coming in because the movements are high, are, are bigger, right? And then you have bigger dumps and then you do have another sort of support so, here, new so, buyers. So let's, let's dig into that a little bit. We've got a question in the chat. Um, yep. Uh, Michael, uh, Michael says seems retardio has supported 11 cents. You can't do support and resistance on meme charts. Why? Because these things have super high beta, both to the market and to Sol. So if Sol goes up, that mean, all meme coins go up. If, if the meme coin sector goes up, they all go up. So, so, mm -hmm. you, so they overshoot and undershoot any sort of rational support and resistance thing. So it's it's best not to use it. The, and also you have, um, for example, with Retardio, I have like a notebook where I've physically written down every one of the top 100 holders and I track. And on a, on a Sunday I track, because, you know, I've got a fucking house worth of Retardio, right? And, and I check who's selling, who's buying. I go through their all wallet. I go through their whole wallets. Who's trying to who's trying to move coins out of their wallet to a hot, hidden wallet to in preparation for selling? And if the big holders aren't selling, I'm not selling either. And mm. if the coin is growing, um, Retardio could could go down a lot further. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um, Andrew, do, we we can give you the mic if you want some help. Just like if you want to, if you want to open it up, we're all here right now. We're here for you. All right, let's give him the mic. Okay, I'm just fat fingers here is just stumbling to engage that Andrew. I'll just for one second. As a general rule here, the, situ the situation is this. We're either going to, this is exactly the situation where every altcoin, even the shitty ones, teleport upwards and do 10Xs, or it's the exact situation where every altcoin, where, where Bitcoin nukes 20% and alt nuke 40%. Okay. Hi, good evening. Hey, man. Yeah. Um, I've been struggling to get my account. I don't know. Um, I had a whole lot of restriction, uh, but I, I ended up getting through the um, the guide. And everything looks good, where, where, except that where are you um, based? because I have... Sorry, the setup guide. Where are you based? Uh, um, where, 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 which, which country are you in? Oh, US. Okay, okay. okay. So sorry, I have the GYDX account. Okay. I this also is, have yeah, um really go teams for the coaches to <laughs> is pro are, are you self onboarding Andrew or have you booked a VIP onboarding call? I booked a VIP, but it's way up on the fourth of September or uh, December. So, oh, man, I'm excited. I'm just boiling yeah, up. Yeah, let's, let's you guys doing. Let, doing let's try. Let's try and get. You, let's tr let's try and get you on before then. Um, I'm just passing some details behind the scenes, Scott. So Andrew, we'll we'll reach out to you, okay, from support. Um, can you just okay. can you just can you just shove your email address in in, in the chat and 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 uh, Annie and I'll just take a note of it. Um, what do you like in meme coins, anyone, right now? Like, um. Now, ah, yeah, let me show you. I'm looking at one. Uh, let me shift this one. I'm, I'm using um, Antoine stalk chain stuff, and it's really good. It's like fucking excellent stuff. I've been killing it with it, like killing it. Hang on one second.
right. Share my screen. Yeah, in terms of meme stuff, um, I'm following this. This I did talk about this one. Uh, Omnum, Om, Om, Omnum, right? And this is on the Dutch coin chain, right? And I think on the back of Dutch coin going back, I think this is the strongest. I'm sort of doing a little bit of research in terms of what that in Dutch chain, which one is going to be like the one that it could be worth investing in like long term in a way like a retired sort of stuff and this one yeah i've shared it before i haven't bought anything but i'm tracking and it looks good right like it looks chart looks pretty pretty okay it obviously in order to actually buy this you need to buy dodge and then go through the dodge thing i i, I did do a post on this one for it this is on the dodge stuff but then on, on solana i really like this one uh blob it looks uh yeah i've been doing a little bit of stuff on not much to be honest i haven't had time to actually do meme but this is the only two that i'm sort of following closely uh blob i will look into it but uh but yeah um those are my sort so, of do you have an opinion on the chill guy one which one chill guy the the like the meme at the moment let's have a look gui uh, gui chill guy Um, yeah, I've seen this one. Interesting. No, no opinion whatsoever. I'll, I'll find that more in terms of, you know, what type of community they doing, things like that. But uh, looks okay. Charm wise, looks amazing. Like price action wise, looks really, really great. So this is the four hour. Uh, shit, this looks pretty good. It's like yeah, it resting. Looks yeah, yeah, and it's like. So I'm starting a, a, a project this week with uh, with James and another guy that we've uh, uh, a, another market maker that we've uh, that we brought on called David Holt, um, good market maker, and we sent him to the Jane Street Trader Training so that he can execute. We're going to start a, a little meme coin fund, and uh, and he's going to do the execution because he's a good market maker and and. Uh, um, and James and I are starting on the quanting this week, so I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, that would be great, man! I think that's that's definitely an opportunity to write that from that perspective. No one is playing that game, which is good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this, let me show you some some shit that I'm that I'm looking at. So so this is chill guy, and mm. what I'm seeing is when you get high inflow. On the twenty second and high outflow, it's generally like new people swapping for old people, but we're we're seeing a decrease in the outflow and a slight increase in 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 the inflow. So that looks like chill guy um, turning around. And let me look at the other one, Bitcoin, that I really like. Let's have a look at this. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm going over time with this, but but I think I think it's worth looking at. We'll just get let's get the Fartcoin contract address. Yeah, Fartcoin copy. And so what this is 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 the dollar cost average orders for um mm -hmm. for Fartcoin. So if we look at the inflow, we've got, you know, consistent strong inflows into Fartcoin, like as much as 700 a day. What I want to know is, are the OGs selling? And 605 yesterday, 800 in. This is a pretty consistent looking, um, looking thing. And Antoine's built this thing where, you can find if you put in like five coins and the date, five coins, you can find all the people who've owned all of those five coins. Um, so you can, you can, you can tend to find the cabals. And also if I'm looking at, if I want to find this, the hidden wallets of some influencer who's, who's like pumping some bullshit, like, 
like was a was an influence that influencer that actually moves the market. Uh, he's got an influencer feed, and like fucking, you can you know for a fact that he's bought. This is uh, handsome. He's bought. Um, he's bought whatever this bullshit is. And you can see the you can see that the inflow was before his shill, and the outflow is during his shill. So you can bet you can bet that suitcase where is it? You can bet that that was just him dumping on his followers, right? And so if we look at it. I'm almost certain that it's going to show. Sorry, it's a little bit slow while I got Zoom. Now we chat. Yeah, you can see exactly where he. You can see exactly where he tweeted, and he's just dumping the fuck out of it while he's tweeting, right? And so, what you can do, what you can do, is use this set of tools to find to try and find his sit his hide his his hidden wallets where he's selling by finding the last three or four times he's done this, putting in the putting in the date. And then you'll figure out his private wallet. And then if you figure out his private wallet, then you can figure out what he's what he's buying before he starts shilling. So um, mm. this is uh, this is a really really uh, excellent tool. That's Can't recommend cool. it enough. I really like it's it. It's really cool. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and uh, also. Open orders, the DCA orders, like like this guy's um, buying chill guy every one minute just to keep the price up, and so you can start to you can start to figure out who is supporting the price. This guy is buying chill guy every minute. And just scrolling through this, you can, you can kind of get an idea. What's the hot coin of the day? There you go. Oh, very that's useful. good, man. That's pretty good. Mm. Really useful tools. Recommend. 10 out of 10. He's uh, he's come a long way, that boy. All right, guys. i got nothing more. We've gone over time. Sorry about that. All good. Yeah, I have nothing else. I've got a cat hair on my mouse and uh, Everything's just going. <laughs> Brilliant call. See you in the group. Right, guys. See you, See you guys. See you, boy. Uh, Have a good one.